Okay, so we'll start. Hi, folks. Uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, System Center 2012 Data Protection Manager with SP1 today and how it provides you an efficient way of doing private cloud protection. Uh, we are also going to talk about a fresh new service which has come out, uh, just launched on Sunday, which is the Windows Azure Backup, which allows you to do off-site protection from DPM to the cloud. So I'll kind of split this uh, session into two parts. One is to talk about the System Center 2012 SP1 improvements in DPM around your private cloud protection. And then the second half, we'll talk about the offsite protection using Windows Azure Backup. So initially, we'll start with kind of giving you an overview of Data Protection Manager and uh, what it provides to you. So there are different workloads, Microsoft workloads that are there in customer environment, and DPM provides a best of breed backup solution for those workloads. So those workloads can be Exchange Server, SQL Server, SharePoint, Dynamics, Hyper-V hosts, or just Windows Server or Windows Client. Uh, what DPM provides is that you can backup data every 15 minutes from those servers to DPM, and then you can store those on disk on DPM and also take them to tape for offsite protection. And then you can also set up a secondary DPM server on a different location in case you want to set up offsite protection for your primary DPM server. So that in case of a disaster, if your primary DPM server goes down, you have all your data in the secondary DPM server and recover it back from there. So this is the solution that has been there uh, uh, for a while, and we have just been making more and more improvements in it as we go forward and as more and more uh, things get added in each of these workloads. So today we'll talk about all the enhancements that have come in System Center 2012 in DPM. So I'll break it down into three categories. Uh, first category is about all the things that have been added in Windows Server 2012 and how DPM uh, has picked up all those improvements and has enabled protection for those uh, uh, improvements in Windows Server 2012 in DPM. The second uh, category is around cloud protection. So we'll talk about how the Windows Azure backup has got released, where all it is available, uh, how you can set up DPM to be able to backup data to Windows Azure backup. And then we'll also talk about perf and scale improvements that have been in introduced in uh, DPM in uh, SP1. So this is just kind of uh, summarizing all these improvements in SP1. Uh, I'll go into details of each of them in my subsequent slides. Uh, there's one thing I would uh, not go into details. Uh, here is the last one, which is around the uh, SQL 2012 always on databases. So DPM have enabled the functionality for protecting always on databases in SP1. Okay, so let's start with Hyper-V over CSV. Uh, so CSV 2.0 was uh, introduced in Windows Server 2012 in Hyper-V. And DPM has uh, started using the CSV 2.0 for providing a better functionality around how to protect your virtual machines running on CSV. Um, so now you can do uh, efficient express full backups. Previously, whenever you had to do backups of VMs which were running on CSV, uh, there was a big performance overhead about uh, backing those because there was a consistency check which used to run with every backup. Uh, and that used to take a long, lot of time. Uh, with CSV 2.0, that limitation has been removed and you can now just do express full backups, and that gives you close to 900% improvement in the backup performance. Uh, there was another uh, thing around uh, whenever you had to backup VMs in CSV, uh, you can do it one at a time. So there was a serialization that used to happen when you used to backup virtual machines. Uh, now you can enable backups to happen in parallel. Uh, in by default, uh, that limit is three, but you can increase that 
and uh, depending on your infrastructure, you can increase that to uh, many more number of uh, VMs that can be backed up together. So how does this work? Uh, uh, we now have a DPM filter driver which tracks changes uh, on the uh, virtual machines and uh, uh, stores all this information in a bitmap. So when it is time to take backups, we already know what all blocks have changed. And we just take those change blocks and uh, push them into, onto the DPM server. So uh, there is no requirement for doing checksum comparison post backup and uh, doing a consistency check to make sure that everything is correct. So that gives us, uh, as I mentioned earlier, better performance for backing up virtual machines on CSV 2.0, uh, better scale and better SLA for your virtual machines. So next thing we'll talk about is Hyper-V over remote SMB. So this is another uh, feature that was introduced in Windows Server 2012, <coughs> where you can uh, have your virtual machines, uh, uh, your virtual hard disks on remote SMB share, and have VMs running uh, on, on your host just pointing to those remote SMB shares. So DPM uh, can protect those VMs. Uh, similar to how you have uh, VMs uh, on just standalone host, where your VSDs are on those hosts itself. Uh, we do the similar Expressful backups as we do for standalone VMs. Uh, and all these different private cloud deployments are possible. So Hyper-V can be standalone, remote SMB can be standalone, Hyper-V can be standalone, remote SMB can be clustered, Hyper-V can be CSV cluster, remote SMB standalone, and uh, both of them can be clustered. So what we do is that uh, we install DPM agent on your Hyper-V hosts as well as on the remote SMB share, so on the remote SMB server. And then uh, when it is time for doing backups, uh, we know that this uh, VHD is on the remote SMB uh, server. So we are tracking changes on that remote SMB uh, server. And when it is time to take backups, we actually back up the VHD from that remote SMB server. Uh, one thing I just want to call out here is that that remote SMB server has to be a Windows file server. If you're using a third-party NAS box, uh, we would not be able to provide the similar sort of protection uh, through DPM. And that is uh, just because you cannot install an agent on your third-party NAS box, uh, which is not a Windows file, share, file server. Okay, uh, next thing uh, we'll talk about is VM live migration. So in Windows Server 2012, there is live migration support, uh, and it can be from uh, inter-cluster to uh, between uh, two different clusters, or from a standalone to a cluster, or from a standalone to standalone. So all those scenarios are possible in live migration. Uh, when I say live migration, it means your VMs uh, uh, are always running while you're migrating it from one host to another. So that's a functionality that Hyper-V team has added in Windows Server 2012. And DPM makes sure that when such live migrations are happening, the data protection is happening seamlessly. So the customer doesn't need to care about uh, if the VM is moving from one host to another host, whether it is getting protected or not. He doesn't have to worry about that. DPM takes care of uh, making sure the data is getting protected, whichever host the VM is going to. And when it is a time to do recovery, uh, it knows exactly where the VM was the, in the last time and uh, which host it was running, and it recovers it back to the same location. So how does this work? So this is like a, a pretty cool integration that we have done with Virtual Machine Manager, where uh, we use Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, virtual Machine Manager is the one which is tracking all the changes or where, where the VM is going from one host to another host. And DPM interacts with Virtual Machine Manager to figure out uh, if the VM is moved to a different host, what is the new host for that VM. Uh, so you just have to set the DPM machine as an admin on that VMM server and install the VMM console onto the DPM server. And then from there on, DPM is able to track the movement of your VM within your private cloud uh, environment. <clears throat> so
So with that, I'll just uh, quickly show you a demo of uh, these uh, things that I talked about. Okay, so this is my uh, DPM server, and let me collapse these ones. And there is a VM currently which is being backed up, and it is on a Hyper-V uh, host HP1. Now let me show the VMM console for this uh, environment. So you can see that this VMM uh, VM is running on this host. Uh, and when I look at the properties for this VM, <coughs> uh, you can see that this <coughs> VM is on a uh, remote file share. And DPM is able to uh, pick it up and uh, protect the VHD from that remote file share, uh, similar to if the VM, the VHD was there on the standalone host itself. Uh, now this VM has been set up for live migration. So let's say I move this VM through VMM. to HV2. Uh, so I click on HV2 and I say next and I say move. So what VMM is doing right now is it is actually moving that VM from HV1 to HV2. So I'll just wait for this to finish. Uh, so this is under the covers using the Hyper-V uh, capability of doing live migration. Uh, for the customer who's actually inside the VM using it as a uh, operating system for his workloads, uh, he does not need to worry about whether there is going to be any downtime. The VM is going to just work as it was uh, running on a particular host, even if it is getting moved under the covers to a different host. This kind of <clears throat> this kind of helps in a private cloud deployment of your uh, in, in your data centers where your VMs can move from one host to another host in case you want to do capacity planning or you want to do a maintenance on a host and you want to move all the VMs to a different host. So you can just migrate all those VMs uh, to uh, the secondary host, do some maintenance activity on your host, first host, and then move it back. And the VMs are not getting impacted with these migrations. Now let me come back to the DPM server. And you still notice that it is uh, showing up in Hyper-V host one. And uh, let me create a recovery point for this. Now if I go to the jobs view, So you would notice that it says that uh, the VM, it was not able to find it on Hyper-V host one. So uh, now DPM, after it fails, it says, okay, let me try to find it where the new host for that VM is. And it found it, it's there on Hyper-V host two, and it's starting to back up from the Hyper-V host two. So I here showed you a manual way of doing a recovery point, but if you have uh, scheduled backups, uh, the backup whenever, whatever time it kicks in, it figures out uh, the first one will fail and then it, DPM will try to figure out where is the new uh, host for that VM and start backing up data from there. So uh, you are protecting the VM, uh, you're not protecting the host itself. So you can select, when you go into the protection group, you can uh, expand into a host and you can select those VMs. Now, whether the 
uh, the VM is in host one or host two, we don't care about that. The data that you're protecting is the virtual machine. So that's a good point. So if it uh, fails in middle of a backup, that backup job will uh, fail. But the next backup job will start, uh, again, try to identify where the VM is, and then start that backup. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, I'd have to check on that one. So. Uh, Yeah, so this is the jobs view. It's not actually the SCOM alert. Uh, so this is not the alerts view. Here you're just seeing all your backup jobs which are happening, but not all of them correspond to actual alerts in Data Protection Manager. So uh, we only uh, raise alerts for things that uh, we feel are something that customers have to take care of or do some action on this. So for example, in this case, you can see the backup job uh, had failed. But if you go to your alerts view, uh, you would not really see any warning alerts or uh, critical alerts. OK, so that was uh, what I wanted to show around how you can uh, protect your VMs, uh, which are uh, where VHDs are on a remote SMB share, and then how we can do uh, live migration and still uh, do uninterrupted data protection. OK, so moving on to the um, other things around the scale and perf improvements. So uh, System Center DPM can now protect 800 VMs uh, of 100 gigabytes each. So that's something that we have tested and now support. Uh, how does this work? So as I mentioned, now we do express full backups in all environments, whether it is uh, VMs on SMB, whether VMs on CSV 2.0, or just regular VMs on standalone hosts. Uh, we have also added a functionality called page file exclusion. Uh, so what this is that uh, if you have your uh, uh, page file uh, in a separate disk, uh, typically you don't, like when you recover your machine, you don't care about the page file or your in-memory data because you're kind of creating application consistent backups. So even if we don't back those page files, uh, it's not an uh, issue. So what we provide is that a way that uh, in DPM you can specify that these files or these VHDs you do not want to back up. Uh, you specify that in the DPM server. And then DPM just makes sure that it backs that VHD only once uh, for the initial replication. But then for any subsequent uh, delta replication, it doesn't do a subsequent back backup. So with this, uh, what we have like seen in uh, typical customer scenarios is that uh, uh, your 70% of your data churn. So let's say like uh, we have seen like there is a data churn on VMs which is 10% every day. Out of that, uh, at least 7% of that is because of the page file uh, churn. And if we exclude that from being backed up for every subsequent backup, we are reducing the amount of churn which is happening on your VMs. And that way, we are uh, saving on performance as well as storage on the DPM server. Uh, the other feature we uh, added in SP1 is around scale out. So now you can protect any size cluster using multiple DPM servers. So you can have multiple DPM servers pointing to the same cluster. And using that, you can. Uh, back up different virtual machines in different DPM servers. So for example, if you have a 64 node cluster which has 4,000 VMs, uh, you can use uh, five DPM servers to point to those uh, 64 node cluster and back up all those 4,000 VMs. That is there in SP1, yes, that's correct. So, so that functionality, so you, you, would, uh, you can now have uh, the, let's say, five DPM servers target the same host. 
and then you can have, let's say, five VMs on that host. So then those five VMs go to different DPM servers. So earlier there was a restriction that you had to have, uh, you can have only one DPM server backing up data from a host. Now you can have multiple of those. So that way in a cluster configuration you can have multiple DPM servers protecting the same cluster. So with this, I want to just uh, summarize the private cloud uh, uh, protection for DPM. Uh, we give a, a pro protection for Hyper-V standalone. Uh, we had it previously. We have it now. Uh, for Hyper-V over CSV, with CSV 2.0, we have made a uh, lot of improvements, and uh, we support fully the CSV 2.0. Uh, for Hyper-V over SMB, we support... Uh, Expressful backups and make sure that uh, we are able to back up those VMs. Uh, VM live migration in case of your private cloud deployment where your VM is moving from one host to another, we make sure that there is uninterrupted data protection. Uh, better scale using the scale out feature, uh, bigger cluster protection, uh, reduce backup storage by using page file exclusion, and then faster backups by doing Expressful in all scenarios. Uh, the one thing that is missing, and I called it out earlier, was around the Hyper-V over third-party NAS box that uh, we don't support. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so uh, one last thing about uh, uh, improvements in Windows Server 2012. Uh, data duplication was another feature that was added in Windows Server 2012. And uh, DPM provides uh, protection for your data duplicated volumes. So if your volume is, uh, you have enabled data duplication on that volume, uh, and you're backing up the entire volume uh, to DPM, then DPM makes sure that uh, the data uh, is getting backed up as duplicated data. So if you are, uh, let's say, uh, using only 50% of storage on your Windows server, we make sure on the DPM also you're just using 50% of the storage. Uh, just one thing to note here is that uh, uh, we uh, are pro providing protection for your data du du duplicated volumes, but DPM does not directly use data duplication for its storage. So if you have a third-party uh, uh, SAN providers which provide data duplication, yes, you can use DPM to uh, back up data to those disks, and that gets data duplicated. But uh, for the Windows Server 2012 data duplication uh, support, you cannot use those volumes as DPM storage pool volumes. So let me show a demo of that as well. So this is my uh, machine, which has two volumes, uh, E colon and F colon. And uh, if I go into, uh, let's say I look at the data size. So you'll see it is using 2.66 uh, gigabytes. Uh, which is the non-dedupe volume. And on the dedupe volume, also if I look at the data size, it's 2.66. But you can see here that the size on disk is 1.68. So this data is actually getting uh, duplicated so that uh, uh, on, the, on the Windows server, you are using less of the storage. Now, when I go to the DPM server, and uh, look at both these volumes. So this is the deduplicated volume, and uh, you can see here that uh, we are using 1.46 gigabytes. And for the non-duplicated volume, we are using 2.72 gigabytes. So we are actually, whatever the storage uh, uh, improvements that you're getting on your uh, Windows Server 2012, you're getting the same improvements on your DPM server as well.
Okay, so with this, uh, I would want to change track and talk about uh, Windows Azure backup. Uh, do we do QA now? Okay, we'll do the QA for, Q, uh, for the entire thing at the end. So let me just talk about Windows Azure backup at this point. So this is a uh, functionality that just recently got introduced in Windows Azure. Uh, so what it provides is it provides reliable offsite data protection. Uh, the data is uh, safely encrypted on Windows Azure, and it is replicated to a secondary data center as well. Uh, we use uh, uh, familiar interfaces, which are there for Windows Server, for DPM, and for v Windows Server Essentials. Uh, we have like integrated uh, into the familiar uh, local disk protection. Similar to the local disk protection, now you can also set up online uh, protection. Uh, you can protect uh, older servers. Uh, so besides Windows Server 2012, we also have in introduced functionality for backing up Windows 2008 R2 SP1. Uh, the backup is uh, efficient uh, in terms of uh, how you backup data to the cloud inter because we do a change tracking on, on your Windows server. So the data is uh, only the churn is actually taken to the cloud. So that way you are uh, utilizing the bandwidth and the storage efficiently. And the recovery is flexible from your uh, on-premise uh, client UIs. You can uh, look at all your different recovery points or you can search the data that you want and then you can recover it from there. And then it provides you similar configurations as you have for disk space backup. So with that, uh, I'll show the demo for Windows Azure backup. So this is the Windows Azure uh, management portal, uh, which uh, provides a lot of functionality, which uh, uh, Windows Azure provides around websites, mobile services, cloud services, uh, SQL Azure, all those things. Uh, there is a new functionality that has been added here, which is called recovery services. And uh, what you can do here is that you can go into uh, the plus new uh, bar for the Windows Azure management portal. Uh, click on recovery services and say that you want to create a backup vault. You can give uh, any uh, name of the vault here. And then you can choose which uh, Azure data center you want to create this vault. So for this, this feature is currently in preview. So we have enabled uh, uh, vault creation in three of the data centers. So you can create an East Asia, West Europe, or West US. So let me pick up West US here and say create. So uh, what's happening here is that the vault is getting created in US data center. And as part of the provisioning of this vault, we are uh, uh, provisioning storage uh, in Azure storage. Uh, and um, making sure that uh, customers, when they sign a uh, register, uh, they server for this vault, they're able to see uh, all the vaults that are created, and then they can go and pick up the uh, vault that they want to use for their backups. So let me then uh, jump into the machine which I want to back up. So this is the Windows uh, 2008 R2 server. And uh, from the portal, let me show that as well. There is an agent that you can download. So I've already downloaded that agent on the server. And I just need to install that agent. Accept the notice. Go forward. So 
So this agent uh, UI is, uh, you can install it on our Windows Server 2012 or a Windows 2008 R2 box, and then from there use this uh, functionality. Or you can install it on a System Center 2012 DPM box, and then all this experience lights up in the DPM server itself. So I'll just uh, show that uh, after I finish through this uh, installation experience on a Windows 2008 R2 box. So I come here, I open up the user experience for the client. And then I go and say I want to register this server. So since I already have created a bunch of walls, so I go forward. There is a certificate that I have installed on this server, uh, which I use for contacting Windows as your backup to get the list of walls. So let me go to one of the create, pre-created walls and show you the list of servers. So currently it has a system center uh, DPM which is already registered. And now let me go and pick up the same vault. Uh, the data is actually going to be encrypted so that uh, there is a passphrase that you have to provide. And this passphrase is there with you. Uh, it is not transferred over to the uh, backup service. So there is no uh, way that we can actually decrypt and recover the data. You, it actually comes, the d encrypted data comes back to the server and then gets decrypted using this passphrase. And then if you want to store that uh, uh, on, a, on a USB drive or on a secure location, you can specify where you want to store that passphrase. So here, uh, what this agent is doing is it actually taking that certificate, uh, using that to register this uh, server to the uh, Windows Azure backup service. Uh, make sure that there is an encryption key set up on your uh, local Windows server. And that's it. So after that, you would see that uh, this server just lighted up. So this is the, the server just registered. And uh, I can go to the protected items. And here, currently, you can see that there is no protected item. So I can go ahead and schedule a backup. So let's say I go and add an item. Uh, let's say I back up this temp directory. I can specify what uh, days of the week I want to do backup and what times of the day I want to do backup. And then I can specify how long I want to retain it in the uh, Azure backup service. So let's say I pick up 30 days and I finish. So this is creating a backup schedule so that at that particular time, depending on your schedule, the backups actually start. So let me just create a backup now. So what it is currently doing is, it is uh, this agent is actually taking a snapshot, a VSS snapshot of your data, and uh, then taking those uh, the uh, the data from those snapshots and then converting it into a VHD, encrypting that VHD, and then transferring it into an Azure blob. Uh, Every subsequent backup, we are tracking all the changes which are happening at a block level. So the next backup, we would just take all those change blocks, put them in a differencing disk, encrypt that, and then push that into blob. And then we maintain like a differencing disk chain on Windows Azure so that uh, in case you want to recover some data, you can go to any of the uh, recovery point and recover data from there. So, yeah, it probably might take some time. So while this is happening, I can quickly show what's happening on the portal. So you saw that it was uh, previously uh, there was no protected item for uh, uh, this vault. 
And as I created that schedule and backup started, you saw that there is a new uh, volume which just showed up, and uh, it's uh, you can see uh, what are the recovery points, what is the oldest and the newest recovery point. Uh, let me see if uh, this finished. OK, so here you can see that there is a new recovery point which just got created. And you can see the oldest and the newest one. So currently, because we just have a, new, a single one, so you're seeing the same time. Uh, so this kind of gives you an overview of all the data which is getting backed up to Azure. Uh, you can see all the servers which are registered and all the items or all the different workloads that are getting protected. Uh, so at this point, it is going to be more of a read-only view where you can see all the data, uh, where it is getting backed up from. Going forward, we'll be adding more and more functionality here so that you can actually go and do recoveries from here itself. So currently, for doing any of those recoveries, you have to uh, use the on-premise client. So you go to the recover data. Uh, you select, uh, you want to browse for files. Select the volume that you want to recover data from. And then uh, since I just have a single recovery point, I go forward. And at this point, it is actually going and uh, browsing all the information which is actually captured in the service itself and looking at all the uh, different folders and files which are protected. And then I can just go and say I want to recover it. And now it is getting the uh, encrypted data back to your uh, server, decrypting it, and putting it back into the original location or any other location that you specified. So this kind of showed how we are uh, using uh, Windows Azure Backup to just uh, protect uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows uh, Server 2012 servers. Same functionality is there in DPM. So this is your DPM server. You can see that I have already registered it for cloud backup. And I, I have uh, some data which is getting backed up. Uh, demo gods are not with me. I think there's some failure which happened. But uh, let me try and see. I think the point is uh, that from the same functionality which I just showed on the Windows Server, uh, same things that uh, you can do from DPM as well. You register your DPM server to uh, the Azure Backup Service, and uh, you can set up your configuration for backing up data to uh, the service, and then you can do recoveries from there. OK, so with that, I'll get back onto the uh, slides. So uh, I, we talked about uh, Windows Server and we talked about DPM. There is also Windows Server Essentials, where we have integrated this online backup functionality. So from Windows Server Essentials as well, there is a uh, uh, section for online backup, where you can go and register your Windows Essential box to the service. And then you can go and create your backup schedules. Uh, you can see all the data which is getting protected, and then do recoveries. So just to do a recap of this, uh, the customer goes and signs up for a Windows Azure account and goes to the Windows Azure management portal. Uh, they create a vault, and then they download an agent to uh, Windows Server, Windows Server Essentials, or System Center DPM uh, server. Uh, then they register it to the service, and they set up the backup policies. Uh, then you can have backups happening either manually or at scheduled time. And then you can recover the data to the same server. Uh, and in case uh, your data is, uh, your server has crashed, and that's what the disaster recovery scenario is, then you can go and set up a new server, install the agent, register it to the service, and then recover data to the alternate server. OK, so with that, uh, uh, we talked about uh, 
from a security perspective, um, nobody can access that data because it's all encrypted. So uh, only you can actually uh, decrypt that data on your server and get it uh, recovered back. Uh, and you can control which uh, data center you want to uh, back up your data. So that's something that is configurable on your end. Uh, we do compression as well. So the data is actually encrypted and then compressed and then taken there. Uh, so we uh, make sure that uh, the bandwidth and the storage is efficiently utilized. And then uh, there is uh, throttling also that you can enable so that depending on di different times of day when you want to do backups, you can set up uh, how, much, how much internet bandwidth you want to use. So as I mentioned, this is uh, uh, in preview mode. It just uh, recently launched uh, um, just a week back. Uh, so go ahead and try it out and uh, definitely give us feedback through forums. Uh, it is supported in all uh, languages which Windows Azure supports, which is 11 of, uh, languages. And it is going, it's available in all 89 countries where Windows Azure is uh, available and in three Azure data centers, which is West US, West Europe, and East Asia. OK, so this one is an interesting slide. So we wanted to also talk about uh, how much is the pricing going to be for this service. So uh, the price for this service is 50 cents per GB. Uh, it's currently in preview, so there is a 50% discount. So you're getting it for 25 cents per GB. Uh, the first 5 GB of your uh, backup uh, storage is uh, free of cost, so you, uh, it's included in your Windows Azure subscription, so you don't have to pay for that. So just to kind of give an example, uh, the customer uh, stores, uh, it, he, he doesn't store anything for the initial first half. Uh, for the second half, he stores 20 gigabytes. So for the entire month, he's basically stored 10 gigabytes. Out of that, 5 is uh, free and the rest five is charged at a dollar uh, 25 cents per gb so his uh, monthly cost for that month is going to be 1 dollar 25 cents so i think that's it so that was uh, all the things that i wanted to talk about and all the things that i want to show to you guys uh, i hope you like this and uh, uh, i like the content and all the demos that i showed and uh, uh, with this i'll kind of open it to Q&A, and uh, if you have questions, just shoot those, and then I'll, we'll be able to answer those. Can you come closer to the mic and ask those questions? Uh, I have two questions. One was you spoke about the DPM server capacity for backups. But as a business user, nobody cares about backups. We care about restore. Uh, have you tested restore speeds? For from a DPM local yeah. disk to? Uh, how fa how to fast can a, a DPM server do restores? So uh, are you like? Uh, saying when you are protecting data on DPM disks, on local disks, or when you are protecting... No, I'm saying you, you said you can rest back up up to 800 uh, VMs mm -hmm. per cluster. What I'm asking, not per cluster, per DPM host. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand, mm -hmm. what when I now need to restore, mm -hmm. have you done any benchmarks to measure what's the rate at which I can restore? So the value proposition of DPM has always been about providing fast recoveries. And that's the vision that we initially started uh, for, uh, and why we have this space backup is this uh, uh, mechanism for storing your recovery points. So okay. that when it is time for doing recoveries, your data is there on your disks, and then you can quickly recover it back to your production servers. So uh, it depends on how much is your local bandwidth, uh, and that would uh, basically uh, provide you how much time it will take for doing recoveries. But uh, since we are not backing up data to tapes, or uh, I mean we are, but uh, our first primary goal is to back it up to disk. We enable you to do fast recoveries of your data to your back to your don't servers. Don't assume tape is slow. What's that? Don't assume tapes are slow because okay. <laughs> tapes can stream data faster. Okay. Okay. 
Yep. <clears throat> the dedupe functionality that dedupe functionality, you got plans in the near future to actually include that for the DPM storage? I mean, as an enterprise administrator, yep. that helps me. You That's know, a good question. So the, currently the data duplication functionality that is there in Windows Server, it is more targeted to uh, data which is uh, cold data, where you're not actively churning that data. So if you are uh, making a lot of churn to that data, then the dedupe is, the functionality doesn't provide you a good way of uh, making sure that it's optimizing on the storage. But so, if I'm doing incremental backups forever to my disk-based storage, then I'm not getting a lot of change there, I don't think. So it seems like dedupe might be easy. I, I, so, but uh, the incremental backups are also happening in the same location. So there is going to be a lot of churn on that data. So un unless we provide like a distinction that your data on your dedupe volume is not churning, or dedupe functionality provides a way of being able to do dedupe hot data as well, uh, we currently are limited with that. So, but definitely for our future release, this is kind of the V1 with the dedupe support. So in our future release, we are going to make more improvements and add more functionality in this. Do you have any um, thoughts around whether DPM might go into an extension where you allow us to create an archive snapshot of data on a periodic basis to complement the backups we do for disaster recovery. So the scenario is I need to have a snapshot every quarter of what that database looked like. Mm -hmm. But from a DR perspective, I only want to keep seven days of data mm -hmm. it, because that's what I use for disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. It would be because DPM knows about SQL and can take consistent SQL snapshots or knows about SharePoint or Exchange, mm -hmm. it could be really interesting to say, okay, take an archive copy every quarter that I need for business or audit or whatever, right, mm -hmm. out of the work that I'm already doing with DPM to get my every seven days in case my data center blows up. Yeah, uh, there's actually uh, one thing you could do that's more of a design thing. If you do want to do an archive and if you, let's say you don't have a tape library or send alone tape drive, you can use a VTL, virtual tape library from Firestreamer, and you could set up a long-term protection job based on month, month, and you can increase that number in the recovery goal, and you can achieve a similarity. But no, there's nothing in the program right now that is an archive function. And we do hear you, and yeah, it's a good thing. Thank you for providing that information to us. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. So, so your recovery points are actually being stored on DPM server. Your VM is moving from one host to the second host to the third host or the fourth host, but all those recovery points are actually getting stored on your DPM server. And when it is time for doing any recoveries, uh, we figure out uh, which host the, the VM is currently running, and then we recover all the data back to that uh, host. So. Uh, to the to the host where the VM is currently running, so that's how it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I probably should have shown that one as well. So. Uh, in DPM also, uh, there is a functionality of connecting to your DPM to Azure. So let me probably just go and set up a protection group. And that might uh, make things a bit clearer once I get my mouse to get there. OK. So let's say I want to create a, a new protection group here. Uh, so I click on New. And uh, here I'll see list of all my servers. So in this case, I just have a single DPM server itself. But you can have all your Windows server here. And then you can, uh, in the same way as you create uh, protection groups uh, for local disk protection, 
you can uh, pick up the uh, data. And you can say you want to protect it to disk. And here you will see this uh, a new checkpoint checkbox which says you also want to enable online protection for this. And uh, once you enable that, uh, here you specify all your short-term protection requirements. You, this is all, all uh, short-term disk-based protection requirements. And here now we have added like these new uh, pages if you have enabled online protection where you can say that out of uh, all the data which is protected on disk, you can protect a subset of that to uh, Azure. And then you can specify how long you want to retain it in Azure. And uh, do you want to do a daily recovery point to Azure? And what time of the day you want to back up to Azure? And here it's uh, going and uh, creating the policy for doing the backup to disk, and then also updating in Azure to uh, do backup to Azure as well. So, so the same functionality which I showed on the Windows Server client, all that experience is also there on DPM as well. And also when you are doing recoveries, similarly you can also see all your online recovery points and recover data from there. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, currently we are in preview, so that's why we have enabled only in three data centers. Uh, at the time of GA, we uh, plan to expand to all uh, eight Azure data centers. So, yeah. Is it possible to replicate to another side of sites up here? Your own SCOA and your data center? Can you come to the mic and ask that question? It's uh, not able to hear it clearly. Yeah, my question was, is it possible to set up replication besides Azure if you wanted to do another colo data center that you already had a relationship with and not the cloud? So I'm backing up to my primary site. I have mm -hmm. another data center. Mm -hmm. Can I have that all that built into DBM? Uh, so there is uh, another feature that has been introduced uh, in the same time frame when backup was introduced, uh, which is the Hyper-V Recovery Manager. So currently it is a limited preview with very focused customers. What it provides you is that you can have your VMM server set up in two different data centers. And then from this, uh, from this feature, which is there in Windows Azure, you can go and set up your replication for your virtual machines to replicate from one data center to the secondary data center. And you can kind of create your entire recovery plans and uh, build up an entire uh, orchestration of steps of how you want to recover uh, the sequence of VMs, you can add your manual scripts and all those things, and then you can actually do your a VM failover from the, that feature in Azure. Is that what you are kind of looking for? So it's, so it's definitely uh, a big part of using all Microsoft, all System Center. So if I'm running, not doing Virtual Machine Manager, mm -hmm. not doing all that, if I'm running VMware, yeah. It's not so gonna be. it is a Hyper-V based solution, so you have to have Hyper-V hosts uh, running in your environment, and you have to have system, system center virtual machine manager set up in order to use this feature. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you can take my alias, and I can get you in touch with people so that you can participate in the preview program. Okay. Today. Okay, so uh, thank you for coming in, and uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions, I'm here, and Robert is here with me, so we can answer any of your other questions. Thank you.